So when we use therapies, especially combinations, then we have to uh, deal with adverse events that um, you know are uh, that come from each one. So when we're combining a VGF uh, receptor uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor such as linvatinib, uh, the that class of uh, agents, the side effects are well known, uh, and we've developed algorithms to manage these patients with those adverse events such as hypertension, diarrhea, fatigue, um, skin rashes, stomatitis, nausea, etc. The mTOR pathway uh, agents that uh, inhibit the mTOR pathway have a different set uh, of unique adverse events that need recognition, early identification, and management. And uh, th that is also presents unique challenges because they can produce metabolic syndrome with hyperglycemia and hypertriglyceridemia, as well as anemia. And, uh, uh, and then they have also overlapping adverse events with the VHF receptor TKIs. So I think it's, uh, it's important for the clinician managing these patients to uh, identify quickly the adverse events and, uh, in, and implement management strategies to mitigate or deal with these adverse events, such as uh, giving the patient a break, interrupting therapy, and if it is, it depends on which of these adverse events we're dealing with, we would interrupt one or the other. So if it is hypertension, obviously, it is uh, produced or uh, induced by the VGF receptor TKI. If it is uh, metabolic syndrome, hyperglycemia or hyperthyroidemia, it is the mTOR inhibitor. So I think it's important to uh, identify, uh, recognize these adverse events, implement strategies to manage by interrupting therapy, and then you can reduce the dose of these agents. Both agents and doses can be reduced. And of course, there is the supportive care, which is very important, and we shouldn't forget about that, and dealing with um, managing the diarrhea, making, making sure the patient is well hydrated, treating nausea, treating the skin rashes, the uh, uh, stomatitis, uh, and of course, if the patient develops uh, metabolic syndrome due to the mTOR inhibitors, treat those patients with lipid-lowering agents. Linvatinib everolimus, as with nivolumab and with cabozantinib, are, are broadly applicable to patients. I am involved in a lead investigator along with Mayor Fishman on a phase two study evaluating the combination in non-clear cell histologies. So that's a very exciting area of which there is none, and um, none approved um, for use based on data. Outside of that, I would choose this agent any time I needed to use an agent in the refractory setting. So there's really not one subset of patient that I think would be better or worse. There's obvious issues, um, for instance, with immune-based therapy. So if someone had severe autoimmunity, uh, um, something like that that would preclude organ transplant patients that would preclude an IO stimulator, then that would be a group of patients that you would steer clear of immune-based therapies but then cabozantinib and lenvatinib everolimus would both be equal options.